and welcome to this ANSYS discovery tutorial on getting started with the poll tool for geometry prep for simulation. The poll tool has several uses and applications, including but not limited to modifying existing designs by mating faces together, simplification and defeaturing, removing or adding material for performance, or even creating geometry from an idea or an existing product. Now the poll tool has three basic parts to its operation. The first is what are you pulling? Faces and edges are the typical selection. Next is how are you pulling it? The default is to pull in a direction, but you can also revolve, draft, sweep, or scale. Lastly, where are we pulling it to? You can drag with your mouse, enter in a value, or set up a parameter or dimension, or snap up to a reference. Once we understand these three parts, the pull tool is very intuitive and powerful to use. Let's get started. Notice when you launch Discovery and open up the file, there is a mode down along the bottom. There's Model Mode, Explore, and Refine. The default mode can be set under File Settings, and the Model Mode is the preferred mode for geometry prep for simulation. To turn on the Pull Tool, you could go to the Design tab and click on the Pull Tool in the ribbon. Notice in this little quick tip that shows up, P is the shortcut for Pull. You can also turn on the pull tool by clicking on the hex that brings up the halo. And from the modeling triad, you can find the pull tool over on the left. Once the pull tool is activated, you'll notice there are two panels, one on the left and one on the right. On the left, we have the pull tool guides. They're separated into three groups by row. The first group is the selection, what we're going to pull. The next group is how we're going to pull it. The default is a direction, but you could also pull around an axis to revolve, pull about a face to draft, pull along a trajectory to sweep, or pull about a point to scale. The last row is the reference. If we want to pull up to or do a complete pull, like with revolving or sweeping, we have a play button on the side. On the right hand side, we have the tool options. Across the top are some icons for docking and hiding and showing, and below that are the specific options available to us right now. You'll notice there are ones for dimensioning and driving the way the model is created, and you can set up references like measurements and mass properties, and additional options may show depending on what we have set up from the left-hand side. For additional information or for a refresher on using the pull tool, you can enter the overlay help by pressing F1 or clicking the help icon in the upper right. The overlay help is context sensitive. It will automatically update to the tool you're in. If you hover over certain areas, it'll give you some information about them. If you click on a certain icon to activate a mode, it will change what is being presented to you. And a number of these have videos to show you how to use the tool live right here inside of the help. To exit out of the overlay help, you can either press escape or the X in the upper right. Now let's get started with the basics of how to pull something. First, you wanna click on what you wanna pull, in this case, this face. I've clicked it once, and now I can place my mouse anywhere I want, does not need to be on the yellow arrow, and the first thing I can do is drag. Notice that I'm dragging in the direction of the arrows, not in a direction opposite to that. You wanna drag in the direction of those yellow arrows, and when I let go, there's a value there that I could enter in or round off. Now, if I don't want to perform this action, I can use the undo key. There's an undo button in the upper left or control Z on my keyboard, and I can press that as many times as needed to get back to a certain state. I also have the ability to enter in a value. Without ever dragging, I can select a face, type in a number, and this is just like dragging it and typing in a number. And I can enter in any value that I like. I can select multiple faces, by holding control when I select them. I wanna let go of control and then I can either drag or type in a value or I may not care about the amount I'm pulling it by, but rather I'd like to set up a dimension to another face or edge or object on the model. I can do that from the options on the right by clicking on ruler. Now you'll notice a dimension is following my cursor and the next thing I click on is where that ruler will be set up to. 
I can either type in a value or click this icon to set up a parameter and it will pull the selected faces using that dimension to drive it. Now I may want to take a face and snap it up to another. On the side here we can see a bit of a step and I may want this face to be pulled up to, I can use this icon on the left, and then select a face or edge or other reference to pull it up to and it'll pull it the appropriate amount. Now over on the left here we have a different, different kind of face, a cylindrical face like a hole or a pin. Notice when I select it with the pull tool there is a value there automatically. I could drag my mouse towards the center to dynamically change the size. I can enter in an exact value if I know what that is. I can parameterize it with this icon here. Or if I happen to want this cylinder to be the size as another cylinder, like a hole or a pin, using the up to command will snap the size of the selected cylinder up to the face that I click next. This can be useful in 3D or a 2D cross section. Over on the left in the design tab, we have a section mode. Notice the keyboard shortcut is X. And I could pick something like one face, two faces, uh, or even an axis, and then use X or the icon to enter into the section mode. Here, if I want to select a face, it will appear as an edge on my selection, and that is where I want to select it. I have all the same functionality, the ability to drag, enter in a number, or use the up to command and snap one face up to the other. I can do this on one or many faces. I can control select these two faces and pull them both up to the size of this face, which happens to be the same across both of these holes. I can do this in areas with cylindrical faces or even planar faces. If I need to snap this face up to the blue one, I can pull it with the up to command and snap those faces together. I can even do that with rounds. Here we can see they are interfering with each other and I can grab one, dynamically drag or pull it up to the other round in the model, removing the interference and mating up those faces correctly. If we head back to 3D with the 3D mode button or keyboard shortcut D, we could take a look at what happens with edges. When I pull on an edge, I want to pull in the direction of that arrow and the default operation is to create a round. I can also switch that over to chamfer before or after pulling that. But if I want to do something different here, I can go ahead and undo. And I want to show something else. If I'm in the middle of a pull and I want to cancel this, instead of letting go and undoing, if I continue to hold down my mouse button and hit escape, I can cancel out of any pull action. That can be on any face or edge on the model if I hit escape before letting go. It's very common to create rounds and chamfers, but it's also very useful to copy an edge. Here I can either copy down or outward and I can change the arrows by clicking on them or using tab on my keyboard and I can copy an edge outward or downward. This makes a new face that I can use for a variety of reasons. Now if I zoom out a little bit, oftentimes we want to take a face and extend it or trim it back. Notice that when I pull it back or extend it, the face is getting smaller because it is extending or trimming the neighboring faces. If I want to extend this face without it getting smaller, one option is to hold control and double click on this edge. Double clicking will grab a chain of edges so it's grabbed all the edges around this face. I want to let go of control and now pull. Notice that instead of trimming or extending the neighboring faces, the pull tool is creating new walls based on those edges I selected and that maintains the size of the face that I pulled here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the model for another example of what pull can do. Here we happen to have a surface and you'll notice that by default the pull tool will add or extrude by pulling it in one direction or the other. I may want to take this surface and pull it around the cylinder. So here I can turn on the revolve tool guide or the keyboard shortcut is alt. Think of it like you're altering the pull tool or you're choosing an alternate reference and you're allowed to choose either a cylinder or an axis, either are fine. And you can use all the same methods. You can drag, you can type in a number, or in this case, if I escape out of that, 
I can go ahead and click full poll or enter on my keyboard and it will go a full 360. For the last section, let's go ahead and right click on this body and hide it. And if we go ahead and zoom in here, you'll notice that there is another surface and a channel that goes all the way around. We might want to take geometry and pull it along an edge, like a path or a trajectory, essentially sweeping it. So it's set up just like a revolve. We first select what we want to pull. And if we want to change how we pull it, we can activate the sweep tool guide or hold down the alt key. Now I want to select all the edges going around here and I can either hold alt and control and select them each if there's just a few, but let's use that shortcut we learned a minute ago, which is to double click on an edge. So while this tool guide is on or while holding alt, I could double click on this edge and now you'll see I've got an arrow here aimed along that edge. Depending on which edge I hold alt and double click on, the arrow may go in a different direction. I have the option to drag or type in a number, or if I escape out of that, I can use the full pull button or enter on my keyboard and it will sweep that all along the trajectory. I can go ahead and click in white space and exit out of the pull tool to now see the results. Thank you for watching this getting started with pull tutorial. Please visit our webpage to see additional getting started tutorials and advanced tutorials on pull.